what's the most valuable thing in my life is always my relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's where I turn to where things are good, things are bad. And so I think it's the best use of my time to just make sure I have and forge those relationships. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Joel Irway from Experts Unleashed, and welcome to another very special episode. I've got a very, very um, uh, esteemed and honored guest. I'm super excited today, Dr. Jeremy Weiss. Now, Dr. Jeremy Weiss and I have been connected for quite a few years um, with a few, few conversations, and uh, I'm excited to have him on the show today because... Uh, actually recent experience that I had with him. Um, I can't remember if I was on your podcast or, or, you know, years ago or whatever, but you have been, uh, and I say this with all the utmost respect and, and, uh, uh, and authority, you've been relentless at following up with me. Not that you ever needed anything from me, but you have constantly mentioned me on, you know, podcasts mentioned me with other guests. And every couple of months or so, I'd always get an email from you just checking in and saying, hey, mentioned you to such and such. Hey, dropped your name over here. And it has always made a lasting impression on me. And so, uh, Jeremy, I wanted to have you on the show because I, I know that, you know, relationship building is key to your success, is key to your your business. Um, and you use relationship building and you use podcasting as a way to kind of foster relationships, grow your brand, and also do lead generation. So first of all, Dr. Weiss, Dr. Jeremy Weiss, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I wasn't sure what you're going to say next after I say this with all, all the utmost respect, but I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, I like to Really, um, the people I and companies I admire, I like to share with the world what they're working on. And it doesn't mean I have to directly be talking to that person. Obviously, I do it through podcasting, but but what are the I think in my mind, I scroll through all the ways that I can give to the person. Um, it could mean posting something on social media, it could be just mentioning them on a podcast, it could be mentioning them to a person you know, I really admire the work that you do uh, throughout the years. So of course, I'm going to mention and tell people to check out what you're doing and refer people to your programs and, and everything like that. Yeah, I, 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 I would love for us to kind of explore this conversation of, you know, relationship building is going to be a part of it. But you have really, you know, gone all in and, and, and really been the uh, use podcasting as kind of like the linchpin around your entire, you know, business development strategy. So can you talk about that for a little bit? You know, and I would love to know, like, how did you get into podcasting and what was the purpose when you first started doing it? Did you go in with the intention of, okay, I'm going to use podcasting as a way to kind of build my network and then turn that potentially into, into leads, into business development? Like, Give us a little background there. Yeah, I mean, so my background is actually in biochemistry and as a chiropractor. So I never thought I was going to use anything in this medium of podcasting. But but what actually happened is, you know, as a chiropractor, you have to learn to run a business. And so I was doing a lot of um, conferences, uh, not around, you know, the healthcare side of things, but about the marketing and business side of things. And so I discovered this online marketing stuff um, way back when. And there were some early on people that were doing at that time, I don't know if people even were using the word podcast, but they were doing online interviews and publishing them. And so I started doing that because, and like you said, my purpose was more um, connecting professional development, right? Um, there's a multitude of reasons that I was podcasting, Mo professional development, if I wanna learn about something, right? And obviously I get to share with the world, I can talk to the foremost experts on webinars, aka Joel Irway or sales or whatever the topic is. And I can really learn, obviously by doing that, I can share with the world as well. Um, because if I said, Joel, let's talk for an hour about webinars and I'm not recording it, like it, the, the, that conversation gets lost in the ether and no one else can, can, um, you know, get value from it. So professional development was another, and I just you know, have a thirst for curiosity but then I learned when I was talking to people, you know, I became, we, we became friends. Like I've gone to people's weddings, we've gone on family vacations mm -hmm. and I do, and you do business with our friends. Right. And so I learned like 
wow, like there's these amazing collaborations that were coming from these conversations that I didn't expect. I wasn't going in expecting it to be like, oh yeah, I want this partnership with this person. It was more, I just had a really admiration for what they were doing. And those things stem from that. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So professional development, I'm forming these collaborations and partnerships. And then obviously my friends and relationships become clients too. And so they were like, yeah, Jeremy, I love what you're doing here. Can you help me? And that's just that natural evolution. So, you know, I look at it now a little, like then it was not, I didn't have all these things in mind, but now I think, okay, it's professional development, it's content marketing, it's referral and partnership um, pipeline, it's uh, clients, potential clients. It's even on the side of case studies, um, you know, I have my clients and my customers on the podcast talking about their business and how obviously they're going to say nice things about me, hopefully. And that becomes also having current clients on. So that's kind of how I think about it. Now, but back then it was more, um, this is just a way to have great conversations with smart entrepreneurs that I didn't have in my circle. Um, and that's really where it started. Did you ever, like, w when did you start to realize that like, hey, this was a great way for me to kind of grow my network and also yeah. use it for collaborative opportunities, yeah. lead generation, all things marketing. Like when did that really start to sink in that, wow, like yeah. not only am I forging great relationships, but all these other benefits are coming from it as well. Yeah, there, was, was that first there were two moments. One was um, I had this VC on my podcast. Okay. And it was a cold, I did not know the person. All right. Someone actually referred the VC to my, to me in the podcast. Right. So it was, Again, a great way of people to easily introduce me to people without saying, well, why would I talk to Jeremy? Like, let's do a get to know you call. Like, you're busy. Like, yep. you have a business, you have kids. So this VC comes on, never met him. Uh, we had a great conversation. Um, afterwards, um, I'm always like, yeah, um, I love if there's any great guests I should have on let me know. And I always say that to you too. Like if there's anyone yep. you see, like, let me know. I'm happy to introduce you. I love when my friends have podcasts because I could, it's an easy way for me to introduce people together to both add value to each other. So I said that to him and he said, yeah, Jeremy, let me think about it. And usually what that means is I'm never getting back to you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, let me think about it. He's a busy guy, but you know, I don't remember if it was the next day or two days later, I get an email. And his email said, uh, Jeremy, you should treat this as a first draft. Okay. Here's some suggestions. And there were a list of 27 people on the list. Okay. And I'm like, whoa, if that's the first draft, what's the second draft and third draft <laughs> look like? And, and just to, so I was like, holy cow, I have didn't even realize what I was doing here. But and to give you a sense of the people on that list, okay, one of the people on that list, you know, they all seem super impressive was he's like, hey, the founder of Waze, which sold to Google for over a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like, yeah, I, I mentioned you and I told them you may be reaching out. Um, so 27 people. It's like, wow, this is powerful, more powerful than I realized. And that was that was one of the moments that I realized the power. And the second was, there's so many, but two that stick out. One is, um, you know, Brian Kurtz. Mm -hmm. And Brian Kurtz, I had on, and like within five minutes of chatting with him, and I, again, same thing. Someone introduced me, did not know him. You know, he's, you know, in certain circles, legendary. He would never say this about himself because he's super humble, but like, you know, helped a company grow to over $150 million and, you know, sent billions of direct mail, et cetera. And so after five minutes of chatting with him, like we just became fast friends. And um, at the time he had a conference that was just thinking about, which was Titans of Direct Response, which if anyone looks it up, I mean, some of the who's who, the biggest names in direct response, he had the founders of Proactive, you know, billion dollar companies and and just really impressive people there. So we were just chatting. This is when he was first thinking of it. We became fast friends, kept chatting. I was giving feedback on like, you know, again, me, like he's the Titan of the industry, 
but he was asking for my feedback on, on certain things. And, and then I, he would introduce me to people who were ultimately the speakers of the conference. So I went to this conference being in the industry, very, when you think of direct response, a very short period of time. And I remember it was like six months later was the conference. I think um, people were coming off the stage, people were kind of flooding them and they'd walk around those people and come up and give me a hug because I had him on the podcast and we became friends right at that point. And so just doing that, it was like, holy cow. And people are like, how did you know that? I'm like, I honestly, I just had him on the podcast like five months ago. And then we <laughs> just kept in touch and, and I would try to help them out whenever I could. So I just realized a lot of these people have been in the industry that for, for decades. And sometimes they didn't even know each other. They knew of each other. And so I was introducing them to each other. Like you should really, oh yeah, I know I've heard of him, but I've never met him. Like, how have you guys, so maybe it's my outgoing nature or something, but I just was connecting people and I love connecting people. But um, that was another instance where I'm like, wow, this is, this is powerful. A conference where I probably would have six months ago known practically no one. And the speakers coming off the stage and like chit chatting, you know, and had a relationship. One of the unique things that I remember from one of our previous conversations, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm just pulling straight out of the memory bank. And if I get this off, correct me or say, Joel, you're way off. Never done that. Did you tell me at one point that you actually have like a CRM system for like how to follow up with people like your guests and whatnot? Oh, yeah. Like, I thought that was really, really unique yeah because... that's a good point and like people are like how do you do this well okay it's not i mean i don't have some crazy system it's very simple actually um one i spend at least once a day maybe for 20 minutes looking through my phone because our best relationships are our phone and looking through like if you scroll through your text messages like who haven't i talked to in a while right and if i've texted with them they're probably fairly close and so I'll go through and I'll spend, you know, 20 or 30 minutes just going through and just reconnecting, right? That's one thing. And, you know, once a day, again, when, when, once I, if you, if I, when I started doing that once a day, I really had to scroll, start scrolling far to go back, right? So that's one thing, but we do have a set process because if I leave, if I left it to chance, it just wouldn't happen. So we, yep. we use, I mean, whatever CRM we used to use pipe drive. Now we use active campaign we use like kind of the deals func the function, but we have, um, we meet once a day for 30 minutes. It's, it, it could be me, John Corker and my business partner and two other people from the team. And we pull it up and we go, who do we want to say hello to? Right. It has nothing to do with even business or partnership. It's just like, who do we want to reconnect with? And the columns of the, you know, you can have obviously a workflow of columns. The way we think of the workflow is like, how do we give to this person? Okay. So it's like, can we recommend them to a podcast that we know? Can we have them on our podcast? Like all these columns are really what benefits them. Okay. And then we go through, we go, which column are they in? Are there one of these other columns like, oh, you know, Joel, I haven't talked to him in a while. Is there a podcast that would be beneficial for him to go on who we should introduce him to? And so we have the contacts and we go through, like, and it makes us think, which of these columns, when I reach out to you, not just to say hello, but like, what can I do to, to benefit? Or it may be like, oh, I have a podcast later today. I have to make sure to mention Joel and his company because I it, it hasn't been on my radar. So we do it. 30 minutes. And the goal is it's a working session. So we are sending messages. We're sending texts. I'm sending emails to people to check in or to try and add value. And that's kind of our simple process, right? That's so, you know, you keep saying it's so simple and, and whatnot. And, and I feel like you downplay it, but, um, you know, it, it might be a simple process, but anything that becomes routine becomes effective. Like, you know, you can't, it's, it's almost like, you know, what's the saying they said, like, you know, what, what gets measured gets managed. I don't know if you measure this at all. Like, I don't know if you measure the response rate or measure how long it's been since you, since you chatted with someone, but that was, that stuck out to me when you told me that probably the last time that we spoke, I'm like, wow, you know, a lot of people say they're super connectors or they're in the relationship business or whatever, but no, this is what it means to be, a you know in the relationship business like they treat you treat 
the relationships like a real business, meaning that is, that's your ecosystem. That is your, um, I don't want to say it's like your entire marketing engine, but it, it's, it's very intentional. And when I opened up this show and I said, I mean this with all the utmost respect and admiration, when I said that you were ruthless about following up, that was an extremely positive thing because it helps remind me, it's like, oh, okay, you know, I do, most people do a horrible job of staying connected with people and following up. And so like to get followed up on from somebody that you know, like, and trust, like I do you, it's always like, oh man, like it makes you feel so good. And you know, like Jeremy's thinking about me. Jeremy mentioned me on a podcast. Damn, like you start to get this, you know, imagine like if that's how I felt and you do, and you're doing that to 10, 15, 20, I don't even know, probably many, many people every day, every week, every month, like it makes such a positive impression. And I think that if, if I think anybody can do it, right. You do it with your own, with your own list, with your own clients, right. Like yeah. think about it just as any type of relationship that you're curating, that you're growing, if you just do simple follow up like that, and I think you've really mastered the value given approach and leveraging your pot, like something as simple as a podcast as your way to giving back value. Like that's one of the things that I really was just so blown away by is like, not only do you interview them, right? And you know, great, the interview's done. You, you, you build a relationship, but now it's like on future interviews, you're mentioning past guests. And it's like, oh, by the way, I mentioned on the podcast, you're, you're being a connector. It's like, hey, you two should connect. You know, you're both on my podcast. I think there's some synergy. Like, it's, I'm in awe. I really am. Because uh, when you followed up with me last time, we finally reconnected because it had been a while. I'm like, man, I just feel, not that I feel bad that I haven't connected, but like, you, you're excited to reconnect. It's like, oh, man, like, I'm working on some new stuff. I'm excited to share it with you, Jeremy. And anyway, it's I mean, you you mentioned following up and like sometimes people think and visualize following up as like asking for something or wanting something. So as you were saying, Joel, like the follow up is not to want or even ask something. It's more of to add. How am I adding value to that person? Right. And and some people one person I think I was talking to a couple of weeks ago was like, why are these people like answering your call or whatever? You know, and I'm like, well, because when I call them, it's they know it's something I'm usually trying to introduce them to something. It's something that's going to benefit them. So usually it's, they're going to pick up my call a lot of times, especially and it's not like a cold call, but like, because they're like, okay, he usually when he calls me, he's like, it's something helping with something. Mm -hmm. And, and I think just to point that out, but also to mention you, I mean, I love and love the medium of podcasting and there's so many opportunities to do that with a podcast. Like you said, it could be just as simple as choose your, who you, who's like an amazing champion of you and just post about them on social media today. Like it yeah. could be that simple to just post about them, why you love them and about their company. And, and that's it. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can do it very simple without a podcast too. Yep. Cause that's part of your process too, isn't it? Like your daily process of like, okay, who do I mention today or who? A hundred percent. Like yeah. I had a podcast earlier to, or let, let's say I had one earlier today, but yesterday I um, had one and I mentioned um, a couple um, clients in their podcast and their company. I mentioned uh, which are past guests. I mentioned a couple of resources and books I love. That got the guest to mention a couple of resources or books they loved. So what I did was after the interview, I pulled up the the video like we have here. I took a screenshot and I just sent a message to seven different people saying, hey, we actually talked about you and like mentioned your book or mentioned you in there. And some of them, one of them actually loved the book of this person. They didn't know this person and I said, hey, I talked about you. I told them about you and let me know if it makes sense for me to make an intro um, for you guys. And I told the the guest as well. Um, but just, again, that personal touch of like, here's us. We were actually talking about you. You know, I mentioned Brian Kurtz. Like after this, you know, Joel, what I'll do is I'm going to text Brian. I'm going to say, Brian. I love you. You rock. I mentioned you, of course, Joel and I geeked out on you know, how awesome you are. And 
I've never had someone, Joel, be like, don't, Jeremy, don't ever text me. Don't ever email me again <laughs> after saying that, right? So um, he'll just be like, thanks, right? And we were talking about him and promoting you know, what he does too. Yeah. Well, there, there's something, there's something I'm sure you talk, if I were to talk to some emotional psychologist, they would be able to give me the proper definition, but there's, there's something so powerful and impactful when somebody says, I'm thinking about you, whether that's a direct like quote, say, Hey, I'm just thinking about you, or it's, you know, the reminder of, Hey, you know, I'm thinking about you. And by the way, because I mentioned you on my podcast today because of such and such, like there's many different ways that you can get that response, but that's what always stuck, stood out to me when Ever you would mention me or whenever you'd you know check in with me it's like man he's still th he, he's he's thinking about me right it's and like here's there's... the thing joel that what that does is it not it doesn't benefit necessarily just me it doesn't benefit brian yeah. like me doing that actually what i look at with this conversation is how do i benefit you as much as possible and i know when brian does this he'll probably watch the episode he'll probably share this episode with his network which then people find your podcast mm -hmm. because of that, right? So in the end, yes, I, I want to include other people, but like, how do I think about you and and like, what's the what's your goal and goals? Like more people checking out the great content here, right? And so that's how can I contribute to that? Yeah, I love it. Love it. When did you become intentional with this? Like, when did you become intentional with building a system around this? of like, okay, this is kind of my thing. This is really working for us. How can we reverse engineer it? Or maybe you didn't even reverse engineer it. Maybe you were just doing it, right? Yeah. But when was the time that you actually did become intentional around it's, this it's system? It's probably, again, like you said, like some things come natural to people. This came natural to me, just staying connected, reaching out. And um, I think John one day was like, God, like you're really good at this. How can I do more of this? And I'm yeah. like, okay, we need to really have a system around it um, so that he can do it and other people from our company can do it also. And I, I don't know if it was three or four years ago is really when we kind of decided, like you said, is when you're following up with people, you have a CRM and you keep track of that CRM, right? So we, we had um, just, we want something easy. Pipe drive is a little bit, overkill for what we needed, but it's a great tool. So we just created something in active campaign. And so then broke, the yep. other thing is the accountability, right? Because I will do it naturally, right? I am pretty disciplined. I'll do it. But if it's like, John's like, listen, just let's schedule a call and it will happen. It's a working session. It's not to like go over things. It's like we go over it. And the other key piece that we do is, um, is we schedule a task. Like if I reach out with you today and again, like I just have it in my, it's gotta be built into the system, right? If I am like, listen, Joel's really important to me. I wanna make sure I keep giving to him. We will actually assign a task in active campaign for a time period in the future. It could be three months, four months, six months. And every day we're going through the tasks of who we, and that may have been someone from two years ago that was like, oh yeah, we don't need to follow up for like, maybe I just texted them a bunch of times, maybe like, let's make sure in a year. So we actually assign tasks to make sure that we keep in touch also. Yeah. That's impressive. You know, being in the world of digital marketing, there's lots of automation things that we can, that we can do that I've been, that I've been made aware of. And a lot of it's like, okay, what's email marketing automation? What can't, you know, what are these sequences that we can send out and all this other stuff? But it's like, man, if you take a step back and you really start to figure out who are the relationships that I want to cultivate, who is important to me, and how can I make sure that it actually is important, that is prioritized and set in some automated reminders so I keep following up with them or just touch base with them, that's that works wonders, man. Um, I love geeking out about this stuff, but I know that we only have um, a limited time scheduled. So, um, you know, Jeremy, what is one key thing that if somebody really wants to focus on building relationships or, or improving their uh, improve, improving their networking abilities and, and fostering relationships, what's the number one thing that you would share with them? 
Yeah, I mean, so imp- that's you actually mentioned it a little bit earlier, which is improving relationships. Um, the first question is who, right? Um, who are the most important people to you? Who are, and that kind of goes back to who are already the biggest champions of you? Because oftentimes we're like, oh, well, all these new people, like we already have in our network people that are big advocates, people are big champions, people are really good friends. So go, what I think about is, in the dream 100, right? And people have heard that there's a great book on it, but um, I don't think of, you know, think of people think of dream 100 as just clients, but I think of partnerships, referrals, strategic partners, all those things. But who are the people, like you said, the top 10 or 20 people that you want to give to? And that is what I think of for myself. And then the first is to, that's the first thing, right? Who? And the second is like, just the ways that you can just add value to what they're working on, you know, and not have anything to do with me selfishly. I mean, selfishly, of course, I'd love to collaborate with people, but like if nothing ever happens, that's totally cool. But I also love to people on that list are givers, right? So I'm going to give as much as humanly possible to them. And ultimately I'm sure there's collaboration opportunities in the future. I'm not tracking. It's not like a, I'm not tracking or keeping score or anything like that, but I want to give to the givers that are my champions and I'm their champions too. So I think that's the first thing. Just start with thinking through that list mm-hmm. of people. And then the second is just take action on one thing, right? I Whether it's a text, whether it's an email, whether it's a social post, um, if you have a podcast, they should definitely have them on. Um, and that's, you know, that kind of just keeps it rolling, right? And then the next thing is obviously have a, make sure it's not just ad hoc. And then a year goes by and you're like, that person is one of the biggest champions. I haven't talked to them in like six months or communicate with them. And that happens all the time because we're brainstorming that strategy with our clients or potential clients. And it's like, wait, that person's your best part referral partner for last year. And you've talked to them five months ago. (laughs) That seems odd. And they're like, yeah, we all get busy. So hopefully that's helpful. It is helpful. It's it's just it's just a s- strict reminder, a uh, subtle reminder of how important relationships are, and how simple it is just to stay top of mind. Like, hey, check it in. How you been? What are you working on now? Hey, just wanted to see how things were going, and being intentional. Whether you're doing that every day or every week, you know, just once a week, sending these messages. It's so impactful. It's so impactful. And and a lot of times, Joel, you know people are posting stuff on social, right? And so like, if I think people appreciate, I do do research and I do come in prepared and I don't just like, I actually offer suggestions because I've done a little research on the person, whether it's a friend or not. So going in with, I saw you posted this. And by the way, the simplest thing you could do is like go to those people, actually engage with what they're posting. Right. Like when you post something, what do people want? They want it to be like, they want comments on it. They want engagement on it. So I try and do that for the people they know. I mean, I have people texting me, Joel, that say, Jeremy, I love you. Like I just posted something on LinkedIn. Can you, yeah, I got you. Like I'll go to LinkedIn and I will like it. I'll comment on it and I'll share it because that gets them more juice on that post. So I'm happy to do it. Yeah. Love it, dude. Man, this has been a great session. I always love reconnecting with you and it gets me excited. It gets me motivated to just try and be more intentional about following up because I think, I don't know, I, I'm horrible at it. Like, you know, I, we've got a million things to do, right? But I'd be hard pressed to really admit to myself that this shouldn't be like top three of my priorities of like running my business because all businesses are established are are built on a foundation of relationships in some form or another, whether it's relationships with your customers, relationship with your clients, relationships with marketing partners. And sometimes we do just take it for granted. And so it really does need to be like a top three or higher priority in most of our, in most, most of our lives. And, um, and it can all like, that's the other thing too, is like, there's no downside to it. There's zero downside to it. <laughs> To... It's only time, you know, it's like the only downside would be it does take some time, but in my opinion, I agree. It's like, what's the most valuable thing in my life is always my relationships. Mm-hmm. And 
that's where I turn to where things are good, things are bad. And so I think it's the best use of my time to just make sure I have and forge those relationships. Yeah. Jeremy, where can we find your podcast? You know, where can we check out your stuff and and learn more about what you're doing? Yeah, people can check out um, inspiredinsider.com for all my podcasts. I probably have over a thousand episodes at this point um, with a variety of industries. So you can check those out. Um, And then Rise25 is our company. Um, We help companies. We're an easy button for companies to launch and run a podcast. So we do the accountability, the strategy, and the full execution around making sure the podcast results in some type of benefit for the business, not just because. Yeah. Love it. So we'll make sure we link that link to those in the show notes. Jeremy, as always, it's great to reconnect. No pun intended. It's it's great to stay in, in touch. And uh, thanks for jumping on. And uh, make sure you go check them out. Go to rise25.com or inspiredinsider.com. All right. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Thanks.